Hi, Takura here. Welcome to today's video. Uh, we're going to be talking about serves today and something a little different, not how to hit the serve, but instead how to measure your serve, how to check if your serve is getting better or not. And you can do this without using any kind of equipment, nor do you need anybody on the court to help you out. If you've picked up anything from any of my videos is that I like all exercises and drills that can be measured. You need to have some kind of an idea whether you're getting better or not. In practice by myself, I could tell whether I hit an ace or not, even if there was nobody on the other side. Oh yeah, that is an automatic ace. Towards the end of this, I'm going to give you my biggest takeaway from all of this. I like exercises and drills that can be measured, so this is not any different. And in fact, serve is the one shot you absolutely, you most definitely need to measure because there's so many variables and you need to be able to see whether you're getting better or not. You cannot rely on your coach, your parents, your peers, uh, you other, uh, you can't rely on anybody telling you whether your serve is getting better or not. For starters, there are way too many variables. There's no way anybody can tell you all the variables and they cannot tell you how it feels hitting the serve. So this is the one thing you need to do by yourself and you need to hit hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of balls to get some kind of a feel. And today's video is going to help you to understand whether you're getting better or not. And that's what we're going to talk about. We are not talking technique today. For entry level, all you have to do is just get 10 serves in, in a row, in the box. And that's it. So that was beginner level. Now you come to intermediate, split the court into half, the service box, split it into half. Okay, you want to serve 10 balls into this half of the court in a row without making a mistake. Serve another 10 into this half in a row without making a mistake. Go to the other side and do the same thing. Uh, if you can get 40 serves in, that is very impressive. If, if you can do this exercise and you can get all 40 of them, there is no way you're going to feel pressure when you're playing a match and you have to throw in a second serve. You know you can hit 40 serves in a row. So that was uh, intermediate. Now advanced, you split the court into three. Uh, I like to call this ABC. I got this from Faisal Hassan. Okay, so that's A, that's for the alley, right? Uh, this box here, yeah, that's the alley. And this one is a body. That's a B, and then this one is C, the service center line. For this one, you do not need to serve 10 balls. That is way too much, uh, that is way too many. You can try it if you want a challenge, but five is just good enough. Okay, so you serve five in this box, five in, five in this box, and five in this section. And then you switch sides, and then you do the same thing. The second part of this is accuracy. Now, accuracy is not just direction. Now, I've further defined this as depth and direction. So if you put those cans down, see how long it takes you. You could do it based on time. See how long it takes you to knock all three cans or see how many balls it takes you. Do not put the can right on the line because if you hit the can, your serve would have bounced right about here. So that'll be out. So that's why you need to put the can inside. Not everybody has a speed gun. So there's another way to test how fast your, uh, your serve is going. Uh, you stand on the baseline, you hit a serve, you see how many times it takes for the ball to hit the back fan. Okay, every tennis court has got um, it's got the same distance from the baseline to the fence. When you hit a serve, how many bounces does it take before it hits the fence? Now, if the ball 
starts hitting the back fans, then you know you're really hitting it fast. And some of you might think, well, what's gonna happen if I start hitting the back fans? That's it, I'm done. No, you are not. If you can hit the serve and it hits the fence, now we start counting, we start paying attention to how high. By the time you are um, 14, you should be able to hit serves that are hitting the back fence. Uh, remember, the distance from here to the fence is always 21 feet. And obviously the court distance is always the same. So this is something that you can measure how fast your serve is without any equipment. You don't need any radar guns. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't even need anybody else to, to, to stand there and watch and tell you if you are doing it right or not. So serve, look where the second bounce is. If it hits the back fence, now let's start looking at how high. Okay, so that's how you measure your serve. Look where the second bounce is. And you can do this whether you're five years old and you just started playing. If you hit your serve and you want to measure how fast your first serve is, you can, if you're that young, you can start off by just watching how many times it's taking to get to the baseline. Okay, now we're moving on to the very last one, which is, oh, this is my favorite one. I love this one. How much spin you have on the ball. Now, like I said, all the, all the dimensions on the tennis court, they're always the same, regardless where you go. Unless they made a mistake, uh, all the dimensions on the court are always the same. The distance from the baseline to the fence is always 21 feet. Sometimes the side fence, they do make mistakes, but it doesn't really matter in this one, and I'll show you why. Now, if you're standing over here on, and you're starting the match, now, if you're on the air, if you're on the deuce side, now, if you're trying to see, you want to see the spin. So on this side of the court, we'll probably try to hit. I'm assuming you're right-handed. We're probably going to try hit a slice serve. So you want a serve that bounces uh, right about here and then curves and curves away from your opponent. Try to make sure that you're standing somewhat between the, uh, the service center mark and the service uh, singles outer line. So you're kind of standing in the middle. You want to stand, yeah, somewhere in the middle there. Okay, so you don't, if you stand right on the center mark, it, it's very difficult, but again, it depends what level you are. Are you entry level, intermediate, or advanced? It doesn't matter how many bounces it takes, as long as it goes in and it hits the side fence. That is all you're looking for. That'll be a good serve. See if we can get. It's not a good serve. That is not that good. right in the corner so obviously the better you serve the closer to the wall that gets so from the corner of the fence the, the, the further down towards the net you go the better your your white serve is uh, so my practice if I'm going to work on my slice serve is I'm not gonna stop till I get 10 serves so is that gonna take half a basket the whole bucket it's up to you uh, I will keep going until I get 10 serves doesn't matter how many bounces it takes, but I want to get 10 serve that hit the side fence. When you start hitting the side fence, start counting how many feet from that corner. Start counting how many feet from that corner. Okay, so that's how you measure the slice. When you come over to the other side, this is the edge side. Obviously, you're still right-handed. Obviously, this side, you have to use a kick serve, a topspin serve because the slice serve is gonna to go towards the middle, it's gonna to go towards the center mark, so you do not want that. So on this side, it's a kick serve, it's exactly the same thing. Hit a kick serve, see if it bounces in and hit the side fence. And we want to see how far away from the corner it's going to be. And the farther away from the corner, the better that kick serve is. 
So that's how you measure that. If you're on this side, you do the kick serve and then uh, you do the slice serve. Now the slice serve, you want the board to curve going back towards the center mark. So the ball goes in and travels like that and then goes back in. So with this one, you put a target. You don't even need to put a target. You know where the center mark is. See if you can hit a serve and see how close from that center mark is. Now at my tennis courts, we have the court numbers in there right in the middle. So if I can hit a, a serve down the tee and I can get as close to that number as possible, then I know that serve is really good. Okay, same on this side, when you do the wide serve, you also do the kick serve. So you do the wide serve, the slice serve, and then down the tee, you're doing the top spin serve. So you have to alternate. And that's how you measure how good your spin serve is. Unless you figure out a way to test it, it is very difficult for you to know if you're getting better or not. And there are way too many variables. And if you're going in the wrong direction, if you've got a way to test it, you can kind of shift and go in a different direction. So that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video and it's actually more important in my opinion than some of the 20, 30 videos I'm going to post on tips on how to get more power, more accuracy and things like that. After knowing how to measure your serve and how to test if whatever it is you're working on is getting better, Practicing your serve is going to be a breeze now. There is nothing more frustrating than working hours and hours by yourself and not have an idea if your serve is getting better or not. Now, I'm going to show a few examples of some of the kids and I'll show you all the different variables. There's so many variables in tennis, uh, actually in serves, that it can be super confusing. Everybody's different and everybody's got a different feel and not everybody is going to do the exact same thing. This is why you need to find your own style and see what works best for you. So um, uh, on this one, you Last can one. see that I have three kids. Now, neither one of these is wrong. Now, this is all correct, but as you can see even with the pros, uh, you've got what they call a platform stance or you've got uh, a pinpoint stance and And then you've got a slight variation something in between now neither one of these is wrong But you definitely cannot mix or you cannot mix them up and um, This is why you need to practice and hit hundreds and hundreds of balls and see what feels better now make sure you, you know what aspect you you're watching for like are you trying to go for pace are you trying to get for speed are you trying to go for consistency or are you trying to go for um so i did say speed or are you trying to go for accuracy we all know you can base your progress based on the outcome of a tennis match so one of the reasons I'm a big, big advocate of this self-assessment is when you play in a match, you do not need to be worried about am I going to win or lose and am I going and, 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 and that becomes your only way to judge whether you're getting better or not. So with this self-assessment, you do not need anybody on the other side of the net. I mean, it's great to, to kind of see holes in your game, but you don't need them to validate you that you're improving. Now, you've got four aspects of your serve that you can improve by yourself. And you can see if you're getting the ball harder, you can see if you've got more spin, you can see if you're getting more and more accurate. But when you start getting to a point where you're hitting a can one in five attempts, then you know you're playing, your accuracy is really good. If you're hitting the side fence with your kick serve and your slice serve, then you know your, your spin is really good. If you're hitting uh, the serves in and they're bouncing six feet on the fence, then you know you're really hitting that so fast. You know, so there's so many things you can check for yourself. So when you go in a match, 
you know what part of your game that you want to assess. If you're working the entire time, you're working on power, then you go in the match uh, uh, focused on that. And you, it takes a little bit of pressure off you uh, uh, to be too concerned about the outcome of the match because you do not want the outcome of the match to determine how good a player you are or whether you're improving or not. I mean, because, um, for example, this match that we're just watching right here, um, Nadal, world-class player. Uh, da uh, Dustin Brown, very, very unorthodox and not a very well-known tennis player, but he absolutely crushed Nadal at this uh, 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 Wimbledon 2015. I mean, Nadal, he wasn't playing bad, and that's Tony, that's his uh, the uncle and the coach. And Nadal was not playing bad at all. He was playing really, really well. But Dustin, Dustin, uh, Dustin Brown was just on another level. He was on another planet. Everything was working for him. I mean, he was just playing unbelievable. Now, Nadal is way too smart. Even in the interview, he didn't get too down on himself because he said, I was playing really well. I was hitting the shots that I normally hit. I was going for my routines. I was hitting my spots. I mean, you, he said he was doing everything that he normally does, but the person on the other side of the net just played a little bit better. So there's nothing you can do about that. And then the same is true vice versa. This is amazing. I think I finished an entire video without talking, without mentioning Roger. That was my goal. That was my target. So I did it. Well, this doesn't count, this part. But I was not going to mention Roger. I was not going to use him in any analogy or example at all. So, yay me. All right, thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next videos. In the next video, we have tips on actually how to hit the serve. And now that you know how to measure it, when you actually learn how to hit a serve, you can get a bucket out and um, practice and see if one of those aspects, I mean, look at that return. That's just ridiculous. He was doing that the entire match. It was just unbelievable. You know, and there was nothing Nadal could have done. Like, what do you do with that shot? I mean, look at that. There's, there's nothing you can do with that. Anyway, um, uh, stay safe, everybody. Uh, I think uh, we almost um, we almost passed this uh, coronavirus quarantine thing. All right, see you on the court soon. Okay, bye.